Hello and welcome. Welcome to the great debate, uh, voice versus digital. And um, I think we've got, got an entertaining hour coming up. Um, I'm Lee Hopwood, I'm the CEO here at the CTMA and I will shortly be joined by our two guests. But before I do, uh, introduce them. I just really wanted to um, uh, explain actually why has this debate come about and I don't have to repeat what's been going on over the last 12 months and the impact it's had but what, um, what is happening and what is evident is that there is uh, a growing number of uh, interactions from customers and uh, contact centres are looking at how we deal with those interactions and I wonder, is this the start of the real omni-channel? So today we're gonna to be asking the question around voice versus digital. Is there a place for digital? Is there a place for voice? Is it something in the middle? So to help with this debate, um, I would like to introduce our two uh, speakers today. So first of all, Richard Kenny, who is representing voice. And welcome Richard, you are from Polly. Hi, Richard. Thank you, Lee. That was <laughs> deliberate. Um, that was only five. That was only about five seconds there. And it's <laughs> quite amazing the power of voice when we're expecting it, when we're when we're looking for it. It's quite unsettling or unnerving when voice isn't there. So sorry to get a sneaky um, head start on the uh, on Chris there. Oh, look so, at yeah. you! You are you are you're getting ahead. Go on, Richard. Uh, I'm Richard from Polly. Um, so you may not recognize the name, but you're probably very familiar with what we do. Um, Polly is the new name um, that's come from the combination of Plantronics and Polycom, bringing two great audio names together. Um, Plantronics provided all of the, uh, most likely all of the headsets that you're wearing in your call center, and Polycom provided all of the video devices that we've increasingly been using over the last year or so. So I've got a very long track record of looking after our customers within the call center business, both in the UK and globally, and supporting any initiatives um, with, uh, with Lee and the Call Center Management Association as well. And looking forward to this debate today. Thank you very much, Richard. And may I now introduce Chris, Chris from Digital Genius. Hello, Chris. Hi, Lee. Thank you very much. So hi, everyone. Um, I'm Chris, uh, VP of Sales at Digital Genius. And I'd say it's quite inept. Our, our, our name, Combining Digital, which I'm going to tell you all about today in Genius. I won't call myself a genius. I'll say my colleagues are the geniuses. Um, but just to kind of tell you very quickly what we do, um, Digital Genius is the AI platform for retail and e-commerce, combining proprietary artificial intelligence with process automation to deliver incredible customer satisfaction. Core to our platform is having more than 30 e-commerce use cases out the box alongside deep integrations with carriers and other platforms enabling us to offer a highly personalized automation platform. I'm sure you've all had a frustrating experience, especially during COVID, where either it takes days to get a simple response to where's my order or can, get, can I get a return label, you're stuck in a frustrating loop. Uh, or, on, or on the phone. With Digital Genius No More, our platform plugs into a retailer's existing ticketing platform, integrates to their internal systems and carriers. With pre-built AI and integrations, the platform can be launched in a few days with no development, automating a large proportion of all inquiries within a few weeks. So from now onwards, your customers should have highly personalized and effective responses within seconds. Um, Digital Genius is already being used by a number of large retailers around the world, including companies like Holland and Barrett, Brooks Brothers and others. I'm very excited to be here today. Fabulous. Thank you, Chris. Now, hopefully our audience has already heard um, from you both now that you're both quite fired up for this, uh, for this debate. So let me just explain how it's going to work. So um, in a moment, I am going to ask Richard to put forward a proposition that, um, uh, that basically it's the voice. The voice should be champion in the contact center and that the, that the human interaction is really important. He will have no more than eight minutes. And if he goes over, I will be stopping him. I will then, um, once Richard has put forward his uh, proposition, I will then ask Chris to put forward an opposition. And the opposition is actually uh, the future is digital. And again, Chris will have eight minutes and no more than eight minutes uh, to put forward his opposition. 
Um, what I can say uh, right uh, from the word go is that uh, this is a voice versus digital uh, conversation and it is not a poly versus digital genius conversation. Um, <clears throat> once um, Richard and Chris have put forward their, their initial cases, I will then ask them to respond. So I will go back to Richard and ask him to respond to what Chris has said. And then once he has done that, and he, he will have six minutes to do that, once he has done that, then I will invite Chris to respond to Richard for no more than six minutes. At that point, the floor is then open and I will be looking in the chat um, or the q and I've got both windows open, but I will be looking for um, the responses from our audience. What do you think from what you've heard? Um, you might have a question. It might be that you've just got something you want to say, you want to participate in the debate. So please do put those comments in the chat um, or the Q&A, and uh, I will relay them back into the debate, uh, back to Richard and Chris. Once we have had uh, that little bit of a uh, debate, we will then, um, I will then ask Richard and Chris to separately, for no more than two minutes, uh, share their closing comments. Once we've heard those closing comments, um, we then have a poll, which will ask you which statement you agree with most. Um, I'm going to read those statements out now so that you are prepared for that poll later. The statements are, one, all businesses should answer the phone when a customer calls. There is no place for digital. Or two, there is a place for both voice and digital channels in the contact center. Or three, dig digital channels are the future and contact centers should eliminate all voice channels. So there's three statements that we will ask you to vote on right at the end. So don't forget to put your um, thoughts and your comments in the chat at any time. You don't have to wait until that point in the agenda. So I'm going to ask Richard to uh, stay on screen and share your, uh, your proposition. Chris and I will disappear. Over you to, to you, Richard. Thank you very much, Lee. So at the time of recording this, it's early 2021 and we've not seen each other for over a year. Think of how the power of human voice has kept us together during this period. How good is it to hear someone's voice? And what is it about hearing that voice that's so good? Humor, sharing a joke, laughing, empathy, deeply understanding what someone else is feeling and letting them know that. Irony, sarcasm, telling people how much you've really enjoyed dry January. These connections, these shared experiences are what make us human. A good call center builds on this, employing people who make a real connection with those on the other end of the phone. No call deflection, no call avoidance, just the warmth of a human voice. So think of some recent times in your life when you've been faced with a problem or you're in an unexpected situation. What do you do? Who do you turn to when it's urgent? You need a resolution right now. It's important. It's critical that you find some information or that you ensure something happens. It's emotional. You have a really close bond with something or someone or a situation. In each of these situations, you pick up the phone, you call, and you're thinking, I just want to speak to someone. The call center business sometimes get a bad name. Often when a company does everything possible to try and stop you speaking to a person. Hiding phone numbers, impenetrable IVR systems, poor audio quality, unempowered employees. All of those are a recipe for poor experience and for a customer to go elsewhere. Let's look at a good experience by contrast. It's easy to find the phone number for an organization and you quickly get to speak to a person. When you're speaking to them, it feels like a one-to-one -one conversation with someone who wants to look after you. No background noise distractions, they understand your issue and they've got the ability and the power to solve it all the right ingredients for customer loyalty. Do we need voice for every interaction? Let's be honest, no, we don't. I don't need 
or want to phone my bank to find out my account balance. I don't need to phone the airport to find a flight arrival time, if, if those things exist anymore. Um, when things are simple and there's no chance of misinterpretation, then a really good self-service interaction is all you need. But let's not design our entire experience around me. I've got smart devices, I've got good broadband, I've got a good understanding of technology and applications and how to use them. But not everybody has these. We need to design services for all devices, all abilities, and everybody's preferences. Are customers happy with voice? Yeah, actually they are very happy. There's limited public research on this, but some surveys show voice interactions have a net promoter score or customer satisfaction rating as high as 80 to 85%. With digital channels coming in around 40%. BT's autonomous customer research from 2020 shows that only 21% of survey respondents rate the digital experience of large multinational organizations as excellent. Has everyone moved away from voice? So the sudden move to cloud systems over the last year, driven by the need to get employees working anywhere, has brought a surge in digital channel adoption because many organizations invested in omni-channel solutions asking people to work from noisy home environments with children at home or in a shared flats on voice calls is difficult, as is asking people to work night shifts on voice calls when at home. But let's not get carried away. Prior to COVID, MZA reported over 80% of employees were employed for phone only activities, the remainder being omnichannel. So where do we go from here? With the help of machine learning, and artificial intelligence, self-service is going to get better. More customer interactions will take place over digital channels, but these will remain the easy interactions. This means that call centers need to place more emphasis on voice calls. If digital becomes the first channel that people try, the voice call is an escalation. Something hasn't happened, a customer is frustrated or a service isn't working. The phone will continue to be used where the customer situation is urgent, emotional, or important. Average call length and complexity will increase. Can we make voice better? Yes, because a phone call is starting to mean something different for different generations. I pick up the phone, hold it to my ear, and speak. My kids pick up the phone, look at the screen, and speak. The visual element is becoming integral to a phone call experience. So for the next generation of employees and customers, a natural progression is a move to video. The last 12 months have forced us to reflect on what's really important to us. And this is coming through in many organizations' objectives. Treat people as individuals, humanize your experiences, make real connections. For organizations who want to improve customer satisfaction and loyalty, the human voice is the only way to make a real connection. Thank you, Richard. The human voice is the only way to make a real connection. What a great finish. Thank you, Richard. I think that was a great uh, and just under eight minutes. So that is really good. Um, thank you very much. And Chris, if I may invite you to come onto the screen and put forward uh, the opposition and the uh, notion for digital. Over to you, Chris. Thank you, Liam, and thank you, Richard. Before I begin, let's make one thing clear. This isn't a debate about the power of human voice, no. This is instead a debate about pragmatism. So I ask, let's be pragmatic, be reasonable, logical, and whilst emotions are important to acknowledge, let's not let, let them rule, rule over us. I ask you, is it pragmatic in this world to do tasks that don't need to be done? Tasks that take people away from their dreams and passions and hinder their journey in life. There are some tasks that are tedious, stressful, dangerous, and require much concentration and thought for very Im little impactful gain. And no, before you laugh, I'm not calling phone customer service dangerous, although I have had some pretty heated discussions in the past. Let's focus on two sides of this interaction, customer experience and agent experience. Since the customer is always right, 
Let's start with them. Customer experience is dated. It is tedious. It is a chore. Find me one person who generally who gets generally excited when they have to make a call or get a call from a business. The queue, the waiting, the terrible music, trying to get connected to the right department, spelling out of your name three times and feeling stupid when you don't remember the phonetic version of why. It's Yankee, by the way. No, I don't remember what my dog's maiden name is and what city he was born in. The awkwardness, the relief when it's over, the anger when one week later your card still gets charged and you don't have a record of the company telling you they wouldn't charge you. I want you all to imagine that you just spent 40 minutes in a phone queue during your precious lunch break. Imagine the moment you get connected to a human, your connection dips and the phone hang up. Visualize that feeling, feel that feeling. I think I just shook with anger for a moment. Nobody enjoys these calls on the customer side. People get frustrated, angry, and fed up. The majority of cases can be answered by automation and bots. And that's only half the picture. Let's talk about the agent side. In a worst case scenario, you spend days answering the same questions, the same queries, questions that could be answered by looking at a page on the website or an email they've sent three times over. You have to be consistently over enthusiastic and polite, even when the rudest person is over the phone. You have to have endless patience, something I wish I had, and the ability to understand every and any accent under the sun. The shift to digital should be about pushing sales, augmenting agents, and allowing them to solve complex issues that an AI chop or chatbot can't. And yes, I'll be the first one to admit it. These robots on the phone used to be annoying and even added friction to the problem 10 years ago. Today is a different story. It's 2021. We're at a point where artificial intelligence and machine learning is nearly seamless and frictionless. Another important point is the ease of a quick live chat. As talked about before, phone calls are tedious and full of friction, no matter how friendly or not the person over the phone is. In my experience, customers want to quickly text questions and queries when they have an issue. In the pandemic, we sadly find ourselves in, the number of orders and interactions with e-commerce has spiked, and thus inquiries about orders, tracking and return has increased too. Digital Genius's data has shown that people simply prefer live chat to calling a company. People just want a resolution to their issue and not to have to pick up the phone. We're seeing a rise of companies taking up live chat, WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger, using tools that people are comfortable with and already know how to use. What could be less frictionless than that? Asking questions to a company as easily as asking your partner to pick up dinner from the supermarket on your way home. Automation with bots is significant. A bot allows customers to quickly and easily get questions answered, questions about refunds, canceling orders, returns, and even loyalty points. Typing on your phone or desktop is infinitely more convenient and there is significantly less fear you're going to lose your spot in the queue or get cut off. The shift to digital should be about augmenting the agent's experience, empowering them to carry out sales and solve real customer issues which require human nuance to resolve. They can also benefit from bots and automation. Using bots to retrieve information from external systems, enabling them to do their jobs more efficiently. This in turn will improve customer experience, stop them from wasting agents' time and calling frustrations and frictions. Ultimately, the customer and agent will both win from the shift to digital. Customers getting answers to, to issues faster and agents spending less time on repetitive tasks. Digital channels aren't just the future, digital channels are the present. I, I wanna just leave you with one thought. Think about over the last 12 months when you've tried to call British Airways, how long they've made you wait on the phone and how angry you've got. Now imagine that interaction with automation over live chat. And, and, and I hope that helps to, to conclude my argument. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. Chris, don't go anywhere. Um, and Richard, please do join us. So digital channels are the present. What does the future look like? That's a, uh, a, an interesting one. So um, please, uh, those of you that are here watching, um, please don't forget to share your thoughts and your questions in the chat. Um, and it might be a question for Richard or Chris, or it might just simply be what's going through your mind um, and the, the kind of thoughts that you want to share. And I will relay as many of those as I can to the debate. So 
Um, we've now had the proposition statements and the opposition statements. I'm now going to come back to you, Richard, um, to respond to Chris. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, Chris. There were some really good points in there, actually. Um, and I, I fundamentally agree with the sort of core principle of what you're talking about there. And the principle isn't about voice or digital. The principle is about good service versus bad service. Every single example you talked about there was one of about badly implemented service. Um, and a bad service is always bad service, regardless of the channel that it comes across on. Um, I've been a, an enthusiastic adopter of some of these early um, digital channels. Live chat, for example, had a really good example of a getting a refund for some of my daughter's clothes the other day when they didn't turn up. Nice and simple, really easy. But I was engaging with a human. I could get a, they could do natural language, no problem. It was nice and quick and easy. And also it was quite quick and easy to show my daughter the interaction to help guide her through any of the sort of questions you ask. But I've also had numerous examples of bad digital customer service as well. Um, one of the websites I go on to recently, every page I go on to, there's a pop-up. Hello, hello, listen to me, look at me, look at me, can I help you, look at me? And it's so insistent, it drove me off the website. Every single pop-up decreased the chance of me doing business, business with this company by about 1%. So after about 10 pages in, I'm pretty much done with that company. The second one that I've done recently as well is, is looking for help on, on getting access to a retail company, a retail store. Go onto their webpage, lovely, big phone number, nice and easy to access. But I thought, you know what, in preparation for this, let's go and have, let's go and try their chat. Hello, are your stores open? I got presented with a list of 10 responses. All I wanted was, yes, our stores are open. Yes, we value your business. Here's the nearest store to you. And here's how we're making the store safe. Nope, I got a list of 10 things which were about using my loyalty points. There was a um, cancelling click and collect orders. There was... Um, and finally, at the bottom, there was a here's a store locator. So even in today's world, we've got examples of, of, of poor, of good digital customer service and poor digital customer service as well. So I thought, you know, why? Why do we still get this sort of, you know, bad customer service now? And I kind of think of two main reasons initially. And the first one is that people just aren't capable. They don't know how to deliver good service. And I'll be honest, Lee, there's probably not that many people in that category on this call today. Um, but, you know, we've been able to answer the phone for nearly, what, 100 years now? We probably know how to answer a phone. We've been running call centers for 40 to 50 years now. So we probably have a really good buildup of knowledge around how to run call centers, how to predict demand, et cetera. And, and if you kind of look at some of this digital technology, if a company isn't able to master those 100-year skills or those 40-year skills, what hope have they got with a really nascent digital technology? What chance have they got when, you know, if you look at digital advertising, that's been around for 10 years, okay? Amazon have had 10 years of looking at what I buy, and still they have not figured out that I like two things. I like beer, I like bikes, and I've never seen an advert presented. But I get adverts following me all around the web that try and sell me things that I've just bought. All right, so there's this digital technology that's been out there for 10 years and still nobody can get it right. What chance have we got when we're trying to look at another new technology? The second idea about why customers, or why we still gotta go through this bad service is that companies don't want to. They're simply not interested in delivering service. They don't see the value in delivering service. And again, Leap, I'm guessing there's again, not too many people on this call that fall into that category. So, We've got to hold up a little bit of our mirror, a mirror to ourselves in this sort of organization. So Chris, you, you accurately deserve some really sort of poor situations there for customers. Calls are full of friction because that's what we've made them, okay? We've put IVRs in the way. We've made our phone numbers difficult to find. We've made our agents so sort of hyper-skilled that you've got to transfer around people all the time. And if, if organizations aren't interested in service, they're not gonna give good digital service. So if they can't deliver good phone service, you're gonna see them implement the cheapest, nastiest solutions for 
um, digital service. They're going to put a semi-automated front end on their FAQ. And, and it's not going to deliver any good service to anybody. The customer is going to be just as frustrated when they call in. And I said, I'll take your final point in there as well, is that ideally we shouldn't have these interactions. Ideally, our customer service should be as broad as the organization. Nothing should go wrong. But something always does go wrong. And when something does go wrong, you just want to speak to somebody to get it fixed. It's not about getting excited to make a phone call. It's about getting excited and happy with the outcome that has been delivered. And again, if you go back to those three points of if, is it important? Is it critical? Is it emotional? Let's look at the outcomes from all of those. And when you make a phone call to satisfy any of those three ones, you're happy with the outcome that gets delivered there. And for me, it's only voice that can deliver on those, those situations. Thank you, Richard. And uh, again, nice timing there. You are just in these six minutes. Um, and <laughs> and uh, we've got some great comments coming in. Um, I'm not going to share them just yet. Please do keep them coming in. Um, I am going to let Chris now respond. Chris, you've got six minutes. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, Richard. So I, I want to pick up on one thing that you just mentioned about ultimately we're talking here, you're right, about good and bad customer experience. And, and you mentioned that, uh, you know, people have been making phone calls for more than 100 years. There's been call centers live for more than 40 years. That's the sad point, I think, here where you have to think that almost any voice based customer service interaction today is disappointing, um, where either you're on the phone for way too long, it's taking you way too, too much time to get through to the right person. Or if you do get through to someone quickly, they're normally not based in, some, in, in the UK. They're somewhere offshore and they often can't understand what you're asking. And ultimately, digital is new and there are some companies doing it well and there are some companies doing it badly, but it is new. It's only been around probably for the last three to four years and, and, and with the benefits of automation and bots, it's probably only the last couple of years. So think about interaction where a brand has done it really well and it's super easy to implement and you have an amazing experience. And throughout the three, Richard, you mentioned kind of it's critical, important, urgent. There's no denying that voice is powerful, but I'm going to re rebuke your points around urgency and important. Urgency, I believe, you know, a good AI can answer a question more quickly. Importance, AI can answer a question at the same level of detail. You know, we all hate the scenario where a company hides their phone, phone number and doesn't empower their employees. But I think that shows an even greater need for digitals. Bigger businesses, especially over what's happened in the last 12 months, just cannot cope. That's the reason for them having to ha uh, hide their phone number. And I don't expect that to change um, anytime soon. I also disagree with your point about, you know, on digital, typically the experience being poor. You know, a good experience should simply be based on two factors, speed and effectiveness. Speed, you're able to get to the person or bot to communicate the problem. Then how effective are they at dealing with the issue? Automation and bots are instant and are getting more and more effective. Richard, you mentioned, you know, we talked about needing voice for every interaction. Um, I really disagree with this point. You know, AI can be used to respond in multiple different types of ways to allow us for all devices, all abilities, all preferences. It can be used on the phone, email, live chat, and this frees up ultimately customer service people to, to, to spend time on actually what they enjoy doing, solving really complex problems or actually ultimately, you know, generating sales. Um, you know, I, you, you mentioned, I, we talked a lot about uh, simple things being able to be altered by um, self-service and, and more complex things needing to be dealt with a human over the phone. One thing is I say, the more complex it gets, the, the longer the call and the more complex it is. And you have to ultimately hope you get through to somebody who's going to understand your problem and be able to solve it. You know, often in my experience, you either get through to the wrong person and once you've got through to the right person, actually they can't solve it on the phone. And worst case scenario, you get cut off and you have to start the whole interaction again. And maybe they'll phone you back, maybe they won't. Again, I'd say more than 50% of the time, they won't phone you back. So you're starting that whole process again. Again, with everything digital, there's always a system of records. 
So every interaction could be monitored. If you do get cut off, which I think is also possible, you know, again, you might be on live chat with the customer, you're interacting, suddenly you close the live chat, which I think we've probably all done as well, which is a bit annoying. But at the same time, at least when you start talking with somebody new, uh, they'll, they'll know, they'll have a history of the interaction. So they should be able to ultimately solve the problem much quicker. Um, and Richard, you also mentioned about video. I think one thing which we've all, we've all spent a lot of time on video over the last 18 months. I'm not sure if I'm having a, you know, a customer service interaction over voice, probably the last thing people will want today is to, is to, is to have your video on and another reason to be on, a, be on the equivalent of a Zoom call. Um, so I, I would conclude, I think, in, in, in just saying that there's only one way, you know, digital is the future. That's what even, you know, today, what we're seeing at Digital Genius with all of the growth of customer service requests over the last 18 months, actually the growth in channel has not been through voice. It's been through email, through, through live chat and through WhatsApp. And that's across every generation because ultimately everyone sees this as the way to get their interaction, their issue solved as quickly and efficiently as possible. Thank you, Chris, and uh, good timing there as well. I said that I would be keeping an eye on the time and you were in uh, just around five minutes. Thank you very much, Chris. So we've now heard the response um, from both parties and some great comments coming in. I'm going to start sharing some of them. Um, so Chris, you don't have to ask, answer this one, but uh, I think the point is quite clear. Ask Chris to tell, to tell me his dream holiday destination using WhatsApp or AI. Um, obviously challenging there whether um, digital can do that. I think there's a, there's a, a bit of a theme um, challenging uh, whether digital can provide that personalization. There's a question here, how does digitization incorporate personalization that you would not get from a voice call? And Chris, I am going to come to you with uh, kind of encapsulating all of these, these questions and comments. Um, and the uh, other one that uh, sits in there is, how will digital demonstrate empathy and support? I'm from a claims environment and vulnerability is high. These are things that we need. So uh, obviously from a, from a um, on the voice, you've got the, uh, that tone of voice empathy being shared. How do you get that in a digital environment, Chris? Yeah, it's a good question. So I think, you, you know, there's a, there's a few different points that you raised then one around personalization. So I think actually the industry is moving to a point, even in digital, where there is a fair amount of personalization po uh, possible. You know, um, smart AI solutions can be integrated with all different data points. So they know who the customer is, what is their problem and how best it would be resolved. Um, when it comes to things, you know, around how does it, how will it know where to book the next holiday? I think that the consumer buying has changed. Uh, I don't think many people are visiting travel agents or calling travel agents up on the phone. I think people of all generations um, will will be shopping online, be making them choices themselves, be finding the best price of flight, be finding the best price of holiday destination. I don't think many people are looking to have those types of interactions over the phone anymore. Um, and the last point around empathy, when things go wrong, yes, I think that is probably, you know, that is the one area where, you know, if something has gone really wrong, then yes, the brand might want to pick up the phone um, and talk somebody through an issue. But actually, you know, if all of the simple issues are being automated through the digital channels, this should hopefully free up people's time. So actually, rather than today, everybody is reactive because no businesses have the capacity to go and allow their customer service teams to go and deal with issues proactively because there's just not enough time in the day. Well, if every issue is being handled um, automatically, all the simple issues are, hopefully then it should allow actually people to go and handle issues proactively. And that's where empathy will come in if things are a little bit more too, too complex for an AI or for a digital channel to solve. Thank you, Chris. Um, and Richard, I've got a question for you that's come in um, just now and that is, is kind of a response to a little bit of a response to what Chris has just said. So the que question is, given speed is often the primary concern, surely doesn't digital always have an advantage moving forwards? I would rather have a fast response than an empathetic one. Richard, do you have a comment on that? You're on mute. It's embarrassing, cracking. Um, 
would you rather have a good response or a bad response? So uh, that's kind of the key thing. I, yes, absolutely agree that sometimes digital can be the quickest response. If you find a website, if you get a good response from their chat, if you can find the information. Um, but again, we've kind of we, we've put a bit of our own friction in the way of finding the right answer on phone calls. So you should just be able to ring someone up, ask for some quick information and find it quickly. Um, but I'm, I'm I think for simple information, again, digital is the right answer and you can find uh, you can find information simply quickly, but it's got to be the right information. If I go back to that store uh, example earlier on. I didn't get my right information. I'm now going to have to call them or I'm going to have to carry on. So digital has the promise of speed, but at the moment it's not delivering because it isn't delivering the correct answer in a lot of cases. So um, I would rather go for voice. Um, I still trust voice to give me the quickest and right answer because what if it's not the right answer? I then got to ask a follow on question and, and generally humans are better at that sort of interpretation and follow on. Thank you, Richard. Um, so Chris, I've got another question for you. I agree with AI enhancing customer experience, but where do you position AI actually supporting a human in the conversation, uh, like suggesting the agent important things to say or improving the audio quality? I think, I mean, this, this is a really good point. It's something we're looking into a lot of digital genius today because you know, we're thinking of today, we, we're predominantly focused on the digital channels. And voice is, is obviously the next, with everything that Google and Amazon is doing, voice is obviously the next area that automation is going to start to look at. But there's always a challenge when it comes to the customer experience. I, I do believe that when someone phones, they're not looking for a robot at the end of the phone. So the way we're looking at this is actually, it's exactly the question raised. Now, this can really enhance the agent because if someone is on the phone, the AI can transcribe what the person is saying and, and pull information in from little and different data sources and then hopefully suggest to the agent what they might say to the customer. Um, at least tell them who they are, what they might have purchased, what might be the problem with their issue. But ultimately, it's still up to the human to read the, to read the answer out to the customer because I think that's what the customer wants to hear. So I think there's definitely a role. And hopefully, ultimately, it goes back to the point where this agent experience should be massively improved because of digital, because of automation, because of AI, and because of bots, because they'll leave what they don't like doing, you know, the whole swivel chair, going to other systems to find things. And ultimately, they'll be doing what they like doing, which is you know, solving real customer problems. Thank you, Chris. So Richard, I've got a, there's a comment here. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if I um, actually agree with the statistic that has been shared, but I am going to share it with you. And Richard, you can then respond. 95% of customers' needs are now serviced digitally. That's the bit I'm not sure if that's um, the case or not. Um, service represents an increasingly high cost, low volume, niche part of the business. Digital servicing channels are the future with automation done well and with humans for cases that need extra help. Voice has a part to play, but needs to be right sized and efficient. Richard, what's your thoughts on that? Honestly, why are you here? You're here to get an interaction with a human. If 95% if of your needs could have been satisfied, you'd have gone off and read a white paper or a web page and made your own opinion up. But again, what you're looking for is that human interpretation that Chris is delivering for the digital side and what I'm delivering for the voice side. So if it's simple information, absolutely agree. 95% of my information is, is probably delivered by digital because I'm looking at a web page to find an opening time. I'm looking at a web page to try and find um, when I should go and do things, when I'm allowed to open up, when, you know, when we're allowed to open up again. So all of those sort of basic information gathering is now done digitally. There's no need to go and, and make phone calls for that sort of stuff. But, you know, there's what, 15 million, 18 million people employed globally in contact centers. It supports about a million people in, in jobs in the UK. And 80% of those interactions are by phone um, because well, 80% of the people employed are just on the phone at the moment. So yes, if you're looking at these really trivial requests, 95% of interactions are digital, but look at when those important things happen. Look at when things go wrong because they do go wrong. Uh, in an ideal world, we wouldn't need customer service because everything would work right. Everything would be simple, but it isn't an ideal world and things do go wrong. So 
yes, it, it may be 95%, but that 5% is, is this much in terms of importance, urgence, critical information, all those sort of things. So it'd be nice to see the source of that stat um, to sort of go and replicate it. But I do think that, that, yeah, we're humans. We need a little bit of emotion. We need a little bit of warmth on this sort of stuff. And we're in an increasingly tricky to understand world. Rules are complex. Rules are changing quickly. And sometimes, you know, that loading of information into our digital systems can't keep up with the ever-changing world. Thank you, Richard. I'm going to um, share some of the comments that are in there. So um, at the moment, Chris and Richard, uh, you don't need to respond to these until I let you know. Um, so there's one comment. I really agree with Richard with future generations uh, that future generations will just use video without consideration and that will be the norm. I think that will be expected. Um, there's a, another comment here. Surely in this day and age with business, uh, with busy lifestyles, asynchronous chat trumps synchronous uh, one every time. Um, the uh, other um, comment, where did the other comment go? Um, how do you see digital handling high demand in contact due to the new ways of shopping that will continue regardless of the lifts, lifts the social distancing lifts? Um, and I think Richard, if, uh, if you'd like to, um, no, not Richard, sorry, Chris, if you'd like to comment on that, how do you see digital handling high demanding contact due to the new ways of shopping that will continue regardless of restriction lifts? Um, I'm not sure if I completely understand the question. Can you just phrase it, can you tell me again? Yeah, I, um, so there is going to be a high demanding contact and um, mm. one assumes that that's going to be both um, uh, simple and complex interactions. How will digital handle that high, higher increased demand? Yeah, I think well, what we've been seeing obviously over the last 12 months is there's not just been, there's been an exploding demand in online e-commerce, which has meant an exploding demand in contact volumes, especially due to all the challenges that brands are having in things like shipment and logistics. And really this is where you know, AI and automation can help because if there's 1,000 messages about uh, where's my order, 10,000, 100,000, or a million, it makes absolutely no difference on the capacity a business would need to handle those types of inquiries. Um, and this is where digital really clearly wins because on voice, on every one of those new interactions, you would need someone on the end of the phone and that would ultimately cost the brand money. To, to, for the time they're having to invest. There are, of course, complex issues that will always need to be handled by humans, but we're seeing actually that in the, in the kind of the total sphere of things that really diminishing from being a very small percentage, you know, maybe, the, maybe you know, out of 100% out of, of contacts, maybe 10 to 20% are really complex issues which need the nuances of humans. And of course, businesses will need people, but, but hopefully for those specific issues, you know, they will be able to cope with their existing um, base of agents rather than having to hire more. Thank you. There's a um, comment here that um, I think is really quite interesting. I wonder if there is a be careful what you wish for outcome here. Once the AI is fully embedded and accepted in the CX, is it not more likely that future business leaders will embrace it as the only channel going forward in a continuous culture of driving down the cost of service delivery? Um, I think that's an interesting one. And, and I'm gonna come into, um, that, that kind of ties into one of the other questions and in fact ties two questions together. Doesn't digital isolate specific age demographics? Um, and uh, the, the other question that's in on the age side of things, the elderly generation are the ones who tend to prefer phone calls as they are not very computer literate. Having an aging population, are we likely to see a decrease in the phone calls in the future? Are the, few, are the, are the younger generation more likely to use web chat, WhatsApp, text? What are your predictions for the next 10 years and what can we expect and how can we prepare? Richard, um, I'm, I'm gonna come to you because um, one of the, the to, to answer that, one of the things that, um, that I'm very aware of and in fact saw it when I was preparing for this, I found a headline 10 years ago, November, 2020, that said the phone call is dead. Um, the phone call is on an inexorable, I can't say it, decline. Um, our research suggests that's not the case, um, but Richard, what's happening to the phone call? What do you mean by a phone call? Is that the, the old fashioned pick up the phone, hold it to your ear and talk to someone? 
Or is it like I said in my example earlier on of what my kids do, which is they pick up the phone and they look at it and they hold it in front of their face. So for me, the, the, the idea of what a phone call is, is going to change the, the sort of pure audio channel. There's going to be a decrease in that, you know, self-service is going to get better, but we're going to find people are reluctant to go back into the high street to shopping malls for quite some time, but they still want to have some form of interaction. And we're also going to find that the demographic coming into work in call centers has this expectation of visual communications as well. So I think in, in terms of all of this, I think we're going to find that actually the, the, voice, the, the voice call will continue. There'll be people who just want to phone call because, you know, sometimes that's what the best thing is. But we're going to see the, the video come through as actually a, a higher level example of delivering customer service for people who don't want to go back to face to face. And for people who are growing up to expect that form of, digital, of, of communication when it comes to it. So like I said, your and I view of the voice call is, is going to be different from someone that's you know, a, a generation down from us. So I think it's got a future, but it's going to evolve into being something different. Thank you, Richard. And um, we've literally just had a comment in that uh, preempts actually where I was going to go next. Um, so I'm going to go to you, Chris. And the, the question comment that's come in is, can Richard and Chris spend a couple of minutes exploring how the two complement one, other, one another and what needs to be considered to make the two work well together? And that does feed into um, a couple of other comments. You know, there is a place for both. Um, it, it does feed into how do, you, how do you get people to move to digital and self-serve for those things? Chris, would you like to compliment voice? Yeah, of course. I think it goes back to my earlier point, um, really, around, you know, if there's, there's definitely a job for both, but I think voice job is in proactivity. So, you know, all, I think most brands out there would love to be proactive with their customers when things have gone wrong, or someone is stuck in a purchase journey, and um, they want to convince them to buy something. Why does that not happen today? Because brands simply do not have the resources or the people or the budgets to go and do that. Well, if you know digital is used as the only channel when it comes to customer service, and a lot of that can be automated, well, then hopefully the people who are currently you know, managing that manually over the phone, and there are lots of them, as Richard said earlier on, you know that that their job can switch and they can be proactive. And, and I can think of something. I don't know for people on the call how many times a brand has proactively called you when something has gone wrong, um, it's very, very rare. But, I, but therefore, if for the brands that can do it and do it right, I'm sure it will make a big difference. And I'm sure we all know how much good customer experience can impact the bot business's bottom line today. So, you know, if it's just one thing like that, where a business can proactively reach out to their customers when things might not be going quite right, um, then I think it, the technologies can definitely complement each other. And I think that's where the, you know, the best in class brands and the industries will be going very soon. Thank you, Chris. Richard. Yep, I think that comment's spot on right. There's a role for everything here. Um, I'm not a sort of idealist one way or the other. It's a pragmatism of, of what's right for the customer here. And it's, it's about give, delivering the right interaction at the right time for that particular customer. Um, yes, there's a bit of a trade-off there in terms of if I want that high level of personalization, I've got to give up a little bit of who I am and what I want in this. But, you know, for majority of my interactions, you know, digital works perfectly fine. But I want to be able to seamlessly move to a human interaction when something isn't working quite on that digital one. It's not following the path I expect it to. Or if I'm, you know, in an absolutely urgent situation, I don't want to have to find that if I dial 999, it's like, okay, I get a bot on the other end of that. I want the confidence of speaking to a human. Where I think there's a real, really big area of, of improvement at the moment is the idea of using AI as a help to an employee on the end of the phone, recognizing that the the situations that people are in, the product portfolios, the service portfolios that customers offer are really complex. And we can't expect people to have this idea of knowing everything. It, you know, if we want a seamless experience, we put one phone number up, you call in, you get straight through to a person because we don't want to put you through IVR. 
And that person is guided by AI that's listening into the call, whispering in your ear, putting the right information up on your screen. So we'd let the human do what they do best, which is the interpretation, the empathy, the warmth, et cetera. And we let the AI do what's best, which is data gathering, presenting solutions. Now that for me is the ideal solution there, is that we, we write, we, we get that channel exactly right. And AI is pretty damn good at remembering stuff as well. So if you say on that phone call, we'll call you back in half an hour, the AI will pop up a reminder, set the call up, and then you've remembered to call that customer back within the hour. So I think that using the AI and the bots to help the employee is a better solution than kind of putting them customer facing. You know, as an industry, we take a lot of time to make sure that our employees are customer facing and ready for that really important role. And yet we probably ought to put AI through that same sort of training and, and testing mechanism before we let them loose on the customers. Thank you, Richard. Um, and in a second, I'm going to come to Richard and then Chris for their, their final closing comments before we go for the vote. Um, and uh, Rebecca has shared in the chat, she's shared a couple of things, but the, the one piece I want to pull out is, I don't see a digital platform working without the human. So Richard, if I could come to you first, please, with your closing comments. Well, first of all, thank you very much, everyone. It's been really good to see the good interaction um, on this from, from both sides of the debate as well. And Chris has got some really good points coming in there. And digital isn't the future. It is the present at the moment for an awful lot of people. That's got to be right. But there is still a role for voice. We can't be idealistic and say we must hold a position here or here. What we've got to focus on is delivering the best customer service out there, the best customer experience. And that is the right interaction at the right time. And I really do think that the, the warmth, the empathy of a human voice has a huge role to play in certain situations. We've got to make it all seamless though. We've got to give a, a brilliant customer journey from that first going onto a website, interacting with a chat, quickly escalating up to voice, and having that voice be um, empowered, engaged, and also um, tutored by the AI in the background here. So for me, I think that we, we sort of really ought to sort of focus on getting the basics right of delivering a good customer service. And when we deliver that customer service, it will naturally flow into the right channel, the right time for that particular person. Thank you very much, Richard. Chris, if you'd like to share your closing comments, please. Yes, of course. And yeah, thank you everyone for your comments. So to summarize, digital frees up customer service to do more important tasks. Digital augments and enhances companies. Digital isn't upcoming, it's already here and companies will get left behind if they don't uptake it and run with it. And I want to bring everyone to the current situation where, where we, we, have to be, we have to understand that brands just cannot cope. I think brands would love to have a one-to-one -one relationship and everyone could make a phone call, but we just have to bring this back to reality. There is, too much, there is too much volume to deal with today. And ultimately, digital is there to deal with everything that needs to be dealt with. Next time you have a customer, customer service issue, find a company which is offering a live chat and a phone number. You know, try both those channels and see which channel will, will resolve your problem faster and more efficiently. And I could bet that it might well be live chat. Thank you, Chris. And uh, so they are the closing comments and it's, um, I'm not going to preempt where you or how you might vote. I am going to now launch the poll and the poll um, which we're looking for you to vote on is which statement do you agree with? So it's statement number one, all businesses should answer the phone when a customer calls. There is no place for digital. Is it statement number two? There is a place for both voice and digital channels in contact centers. Or is it statement number three? Digital channels are the future and contact centers should eliminate all voice calls. And I think I am going to hold it there because I think it's really obvious. Hopefully you can see those results. I think, um, as someone said right at the top of the call, the first comment question that came in um, just, uh, just now was, I think we can all agree that there is a need for both. And I think uh, it's been a fantastic debate. I think what we've heard is Richard sharing the, um, the I haven't even shared the results, have I? Um, there you go, can you see the results now? 94% um, say that there is a, 
a place for both. And I don't think that's a big surprise. Um, I think it's playing out uh, all the time right now is in that uh, there is a place for voice and whether that is for the empathy and the emotional um, interactions that are going on um, or whether it's actually because that's your brand promise. Um, so there is a place for both. And Richard, thank you very much representing voice and uh, speaking, I'm going to say on behalf of Polly, um, representing Polly in the argument. Really appreciate your comments there. And Chris, thank you very much for representing digital. I think you've had a, a quite a hard time um, because the, in essence, the, um, the, the audience says that there's a place for voice um, as well. So Chris, thank you very much for putting forward your, your comments. Really appreciate that. And thank you everybody for joining us for this great debate. Um, I'm sure we will have another debate in the coming months. Um, and if there is something you want us to debate about, please do let us know and we will uh, look to put together a panel. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day and uh, we shall see you soon. Thank, Thank you. you.